Hello everyone. My guest today is Sasan Tapatbe, our Director of Customer Support Engineering. Welcome, Sasan. Hi, Steve. Thank you. In part one, you discussed period jitter. And this week, you're going to focus on phase noise and time interval error, or TIE. And before you go into measurement details, can you define this type of jitter and specific applications that care about it? Sure. I talked about period jitter and define jitter as a variation of an event in the signal relative to its ideal value. This time we're going to focus on variation of an edge relative to its ideal location in time. And that is what is referred to as time interval error and it's also indicated by the, by the noise in the phase of the signal, hence its relation to phase noise. Let me provide a sort of a graphical definition of phase noise. So if you have an oscillator signal, the way it's shown at the right side, bottom side of the screen, ideal signal, and look at it in the spectrum domain, with the spectrum analyzer, and I would see a very, very uh, concentrated energy shown with the blue line in this uh, plot. A real oscillator, however, has certain amount of noise in it due to different sources, even, even thermal noises. That amount of noise will cause the energy of the signal to spread in frequencies beyond the narrow frequency of the carrier. And those spreads are the ones that are referred to as phase noise because the reason for them is the noise in the phase of the signal. Um, they are typically expressed as a ratio of the noise spectral density to the oscillator carrier power. So it's a ratio that we are specifying as phase noise. Let me show you an example. Uh, uh, here, let's talk about who cares about it. Mm -hmm. So one of the uh, applications, a series of applications that care about phase noise and phase shift are high-speed serial IOs. For example, uh, data streams, serial data streams such as SAS, SATA, USB, HDMI for video, Ethernet for networking, and Sonnet SDH uh, for telecom. They're all different types of domains of applications, but they use phase noise and phase shader to specify the performance of the clock because they deal with the history of the edges as opposed to only two edges relative to each other. A long history of the edges have to be considered, and that's why they care about the noise or variation of the noise over time, the movements of edges over time. Other applications that care about phase noise are RF applications, and that is because um, it has to do with the amount of energy away from the carrier frequency that the signal is being transmitted. That affects the signal-to-noise ratio of the receivers and the amount of bit, bit trace you can get through the RF transceivers. Those type of applications are radio and uh, TV broadcast, basic stations and handsets, uh, Wi-Fi uh, hotspots and equipment, and also telemetry equipment and positioning systems such as GPS. They also care about phase noise. Instrumentation is another example. So, uh, Sasan, if I can uh, just make sure I understand these two segments you're referring to. The first one, digital electronics or serial I.O. In that segment, uh, the reason why phase jitter is important, phase noise analysis is important, is because the clock is embedded in data and then extracted on the receiver end, and therefore they need to see a history profile um, of the uh, of the jitter of the jitter or phase jitter. Is that is that uh, accurate? Yes, that is accurate for digital applications. To extract the clock from a from a data stream, you need to look at the history of the edges. So period jitter or cycle to cycle isn't as meaningful in those applications. That is correct. And then the other segment you're showing is RF transceivers and frequency synthesizers. In those scenarios, or those applications, those aren't necessarily embedded um, a clock inside a data stream, but they need, they have specific phase noise requirements. Is that correct? That is correct, because the movements of the edges or the movements of the phase over time impacts the signal to noise ratio at the receive side, right. and that's why it becomes important. Thanks, I understand. So let's look at an example. Here uh, we are showing an example of phase noise of a clock signal. This is for a uh, SIT8208 clock series from Cytine at 10 megahertz. And you can see that the phase noise levels are fairly low, minus 150 dBc per hertz to minus 160 dBc per hertz. Um, the phase noise is expressed, measured in one hertz bandwidth, and expressed as dBc per hertz. The C 
db refers to the ratio, as we discussed, noise relative to signal. C means that it's relative to the carrier signal. C stands for carrier. And hertz is refers to being specified in one hertz bandwidth. And the x axis, as you can see, it's, it's in hertz and is relative to the carrier frequency. That's why it's called frequency offset. The x axis is referred to as frequency offset. The turn hertz offset or 100 hertz offset means 100 hertz away from the main carrier, in this case, 10 megahertz carrier. So, Sasan, if we look at this, looking at this plot uh, from a um, phase noise anal analyzer, correct? Yes. Um, this is um, just one sideband of the, um, of the clock frequency. Is that correct? That is correct. This is what is called SSB or single sideband uh, spectrum. So, a couple of slides ago, you showed um, at the blue uh, plot, uh, where it's an ideal clock, and then um, on each side, right and left side of that, that uh, carrier frequency, there is um, a noise spectrum offset from the, the, the center frequency, the carrier frequency, right? Yes. So we're looking at one side of that. Yes, because the same single side band, uh, the two sides are basically mirror image of each other. Yes. You only need to look at one side to see the performance of the phase noise. You don't need to look at both sides. Thank you. So let's move on to phase jitter. What is phase jitter? Phase jitter is effectively movement of edges uh, over time. And it's computed from phase noise by integrating phase noise. That's why it's sometimes called integrate phase jitter. Here at the bottom of the screen, you see it showing graphically we integrate the area underneath the phase noise plot and scale it. And that gives us a single number, which is referred to as phase jitter. This type of uh, measurement typically is relevant to, as we said, um, serial interfaces, 10 gigabit Ethernet, PCIe, SATA, SAS, and so on. And then the, uh, the offset frequency, F1 to F2, is a function or is established by the specific application. Is that, a, is that true? That is correct. Got it. Yes. Good. So not all applications use, let's say, 12K to 20 megahertz, which is what you're showing here. That is, that is correct. 20, 12 megahertz to 12 kilohertz to 20 megahertz is typically used as a generic band to compare uh, devices, but it's not what is relevant to the application. Okay. Um, so let's move on to the next slide. Here I'm showing a formula, which I don't intend to go through it. <laughs> uh, all it's supposed it to, yeah. yes, it looks busy. Uh, all it's supposed to show is that the phase noise which is uh, shown as SJ of F on the uh, right side of, this, of the formula, uh, basically defines the phase jitter for, for different types of applications. And different types of applications and jitter definitions would have different type of filters shown here as jitter filter H of F. So this shows that phase noise and phase jitter are related using this formula, which is an industry-wide formula used for computing phase jitter. Got it. And I, if, if there's customers that want to understand in more detail phase noise and phase jitter and the analysis of it, do we have uh, content on our website available for that? Yes, we do have uh, a number of app notes. One of our app notes called um, um, Jitter Definitions and Measurements uh, includes more details about this and the reference for that app note is at the end of this presentation. Great. Thanks. So let's move on and, uh, to a series of applications for serial IOs, uh, embedded clocking serial IOs, very common today in industry, industry, both in datacom, servers, and also telecom. These type of serial IOs use transmitter PLLs that uh, basically translate the frequency, reference frequency to much higher rates, and then serialize data. So data would come out at very few lines, 2 to 16 lines typically. Uh, but very high speed, 1 gig to 10 gig, sometimes 25 gig today, these days, goes to the receiver, receiver recovers a clock from it and uses it to resample the data and from there receive the data. Once you go through this system, effectively the clock phase jitter or phase noise will go through a bandpass filter shown at the bottom of the screen. And the quarter frequencies for the bandpass filter is defined by the transmitter PLO.